Uh, I am Aditya Jeevs, currently pursuing LLB first year and an intern at UB Advocate. Today, let's discuss about the uh, about the one of the important landmark judgments of India, that is MC Mehta and another versus Union of India and others, which took place in 1986. So, uh, before we dwell into the uh, before we go into this uh, case, let's look at some relevant provisions. So, Article 12 of the Kingdom Constitution talks about uh, the state. Article 21 talks about protection of life and personal liberty. And Article 32 mentions about the procedure for writ petition to Supreme Court for violation of fundamental rights. Now, moving on to the uh, background of the case. Sriram Food and Fertilizers Factory was situated in uh, Delhi in an area called as Kritinagar, which had a population of around 2 lakh people. Um, some of the products which are mainly made here were... Uh, are technical oil and glycerin soaps. MC Mehta, a social activist lawyer, uh, filed a writ petition under Article 32 of the Constitution seeking closure of various units of Sriram food and fertilizers industry on the grounds that they were ha hazardous to the community living around it. Uh, and, but uh, during the pendency of this case itself, two incidents took place. First was on the 4th of December 1985, where uh, there was, uh, due to the bursting of, an, uh, uh, of a tank, Olam gas leaked and it caused damage and uh, damage, it uh, was very harmful to the people around uh, the factory. And uh, there was a second leak on 6th of December that was just after two days. Uh, this was a comparatively a minor one, but this also caused a lot of damage to people around uh, the factory. So the Delhi Aid and uh, the Delhi Aid and Advice Board of Delhi Bar Association filed applications for award of compensation to the persons who had suffered harm on account of the Olum gas leak. This, uh, this repetition of uh, under Article 32 of the Constitution was initially under the bench of three judges, but looking at the constitutional importance involved in this case, it was later referred to a larger constitution bench of five judges. The judgment was pronounced by Chief Justice, uh, the then Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Bhagavati P.N. So going on to the issues of this case, the first issue was the scope and jurisdiction of the Supreme Court under Article 32. Then was the issue of compensation. Then the third was measure of liability. And the fourth issue was whether Sri Ram could be considered as a state within the scope of Article 30, uh, within the scope of Article 12 of the Constitution. The first one of, uh, regarding red petition and the scope of Article 32. Uh, the power of the court, uh, here the court held that the power of the court isn't just injunctive in nature, but it is also remedial in scope and uh, it can provide and it can provide relief against breach of fundamental right, which has already been committed. Then it also mentioned that article 32 should not be a substitute for enforcement of right to claim compensation. Uh, it cannot be a substitute for uh, claiming a compensation through other procedures, but it also said that uh, under uh, exceptional cases, compensation could be awarded under this uh, particular article. And then moving on to compensation, the Delhi Legal Aid and Advice Board was directed to take upon the case and uh, uh, to all uh, to direct uh, was directed to take up the case for all those who claim to have suffered on account of the Olum gas leak uh, 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 to claim compensation. Then the, uh, the Supreme Court also said that, mentioned that the measure of compensation must be correlated to the magnitude and capacity of the enterprise. So if the enterprise is doing really well, then the compensation amount which the enterprise will have to give will uh, uh, obviously be more. Uh, uh, then moving on to the third issue of measure of liability. Uh, uh, before we go into this issue, I would like to introduce you, I would like to talk about Rylands versus Fletcher case, which took place in 1866. Here, the principle of strict liability was established. What it says is if a person who brings on to his land and collects and keeps anything likely to harm and such thing escapes and does damage to another, he is likely, he is liable to pay compensation for the damage cost. So far, it sounds so good. But there are a few exceptions, that, uh, exceptions or differences which a person could claim. Uh, this, these include act of God, act of a stranger, default of a person injured, uh, the thing which escapes is presented by consent of the person injured. In certain cases, with the statutory authority. So here, the liability of the per, uh, liability is not absolute. So the court held that law has to grow in order to satisfy the needs of the fast changing society. Here, the court also said that law cannot afford to remain static. 
although the court should be prepared to receive light from whatever source it may come but it has to build up on its own jurisprudence and evolve new principles and this was one of the key cases in establishing the principle of absolute liability in our country so the court here said that irrespective of the re- reasonable care or uh, the uh, uh, event occurred without negligence here the company will be held liable for the damage it has caused and then uh, moving on to the next issue if shri ram could be considered as a state under this uh, under the article 12 uh, here the shri ram was owned by the delhi cloth mills limited it was a public company limited by shares which is in the industry vital to public interest and which had a potential effect to life and health of the citizens of our country but the court held that it did not have sufficient time to come to a conclusion regarding this issue but it also stated that if in later stage if it was required to do so it would be left to proper consideration uh, and this is uh, this is uh, my question this is mc mehta uh, who was uh, who filed the case and then this is the former chief justice of india pn bhagavathi so in conclusion the decision in this case had to be made in a manner so that it do not hinder the economic development of a country but it also had to ensure the protection of the victims uh, this case was uh, very influential in bringing the environmental protection act of 1986 the company had been held exclusively responsible for an incident and had to pay compensation irrespective of the claims uh, it had made in its defense and it also talked about the scope of article 32 this is all i have to say thank you i thank uh, the team of ub advocates for giving me this opportunity thank you so much